I've maintained a split chassis model before and I've hardwired a non-DCC ready model before. So today I merged these two videos and installed DCC to a split chassis model. Also, whilst I'm at it, I make my own and install a stay alive and also give it some more pickups, thus making it a lot better at running. So, old Bankman and mainline models are split chassis and are notorious for being said to be impossible to install DCC into. However, that is not the case. It's not as straightforward as other models, but it is not impossible. So, let's see what we'll need. A DCC decoder with stay alive capability. Not all of them have this, so make sure that the ones that you get have this capability. Uh, some copper strip, a micro four pin plug and socket, some 0.1 millimeter wire, some fine brass wire, some heat shrink, a 1N4007 diode, a 1N5352B Zener diode, a 100 ohm and a 100 kilo ohm resistor, and as big of a capacitor as your space will allow. This one here, for example, is 4,700 microfarads. I've included a list of all the items required below just to help out. So before we start, tap those like and subscribe buttons to keep up to date of any new videos, because there may be some like this and there may be some not like this. So keep your eyes peeled. So let's not waste any more time. To start with, I'm looking at the loco end. Take the whole loco apart right down to splitting the split chassis into two. This is an old Bachman modified hall. This will also be receiving a cosmetic upgrade as well soon, so keep an eye out for that. However, it has also already been stripped of paint and check this previous video for that. So once fully dismantled, I took the opportunity to do a thorough clean of all the pickups and anywhere old grease had built up. Once the loco is put back together, I'll re-lubricate it, but that is for later. But now we head towards the front. Using a little bit of emery cloth or fine sandpaper, polish two small sections on the inner side of the chassis parts. This must be nice and shiny, as that this is where the pickup feed will be coming from. And then taking two small pieces of copper strip, this is some leftover copper clad sleeper from where I built my own points, check that video out, but anything similar will do. These are then super glued, offset from each other over the shiny parts of the chassis. Once these are made, I made some little brass springs. These are made out of some, some fine brass wire and these were then soldered onto the outer faces of the copper strips. I then did a trial fit where I put the chassis back together and then took my meter and made sure I had a good connection between one side of the chassis and one of the copper strips. A reading of anything around 0.5 to 0.7 you know, is a good amount. Once I had confirmed that, I soldered some pieces of small wire onto these copper strips and then cut the copper strips down to size. I then worked out roughly where the small plug and socket were going to need to come into the loco and this then required a small hole drilling. The wires were then fed up into the loco through the hole, the wires are cut to length for the motor and the pickup wires. Once the length had been established, I took the model apart again and these wires were soldered onto the motor with some heat shrink going on over the bare conductors uh, just to make sure no short circuits could possibly occur. I then put the chassis back together again for the last time, hopefully. This is when I soldered the pickup wires to the plug socket as well, again with some heat shrink over the joint. I then found that the best place for this was over the motor as there was a little bit more room. I now took the opportunity to lubricate all the gears and I made sure to put plenty on as I had just removed all of the old previous stuff. Then once all the wires had been soldered together, I put the body shell on. I did find with the new wires it was slightly tighter getting the body on at the rear, so a quick shave with a scalpel was required and then it fitted on nicely and that is the local half done. Next we move on to the tender. Before that, an advert. I'm kidding, there are no adverts. To the tender. The first step on the tender is to work out where the pickups are going to be attached 
to the chassis. This varies a bit between models, so there is no definitive answer, but this is where I chose. I would recommend doing this before taking all the chassis apart, as it'll help, as you'll have all the pieces that could possibly get in the way of these copper strips still there. I didn't do that initially and had to put it all back together again for this step. And it was, it was just a pain in the ass. Naughty words were said. Uh, these little copper strips are then simply super glued in place. And then I worked on the actual pickups themselves. These were just made of some brass wire. Now there are two options for these. Either they can be made up as wipers and go on the back of the flange, which is reasonably common, especially with some of the older models. Or, like I'm doing, these axles have a bit of a metal collar, so I'm going to have them pressed up against that. As I say, this isn't an option on all tenders. Some of the older mainline ones just have a metal flange and that's it. But this is a slightly newer Backman one. The added bonus of this style is that you'll also be giving your model some suspension, which may or may not be nice, I haven't decided yet. So to actually make them, I simply bent them to shape and soldered in place. Sounds simple, and for the most part it is. Next, you add the wires. But here is a little tip for you. Solder the wires onto the copper strip before you solder the pickups on. As you'll get the pickups in place all nicely lined up, and then when you solder the wire on, they'll move, and that is so frustrating. And yeah, I found that out the hard way. Again, more naughty words were said. So, once you have the wires on, whichever way you did it, the easy way or the frustrating way, I then soldered all the left hand pickups together, along with the ones from the track inputs from the decoder, either black or red. And then all of the right hand pickups to the track input on the decoder. And make sure you get all these the right way around, otherwise your model will just not work at all and short out your controller. Next. I soldered the two motor wires to the two motor inputs from the decoder in orange and grey on the decoder. And now that's the model fitted with tender pickups and DCC. You could finish there, however, as I've said, I want this to have a stay alive in it. So these two final long wires, these will connect to the homemade stay alive. Now you can buy a stay alive ready made for about £10, but realistically they'll only have at maximum about one pound's worth of parts in them and they're pretty easy to make so I put together the two resistors two diodes and a capacitor together in this formation and then well, covered in heat shrink well I would have covered it in heat shrink but my heat shrink wasn't actually big enough for this size of capacitor so I just wrapped it in insulation tape uh, and then attached the two wires coming out of the decoder to the stay alive Again, making sure that you get the polarity of the capacitor correct, as otherwise it will probably blow a hole in the side of your tender, <laughs> as capacitors are extremely sensitive to the polarity. So yeah, sold it on to the decoder and voila, stay alive. I previously used a 1000 microfarad capacitor but this was just simply too small to see any discernible benefits. So a quick test run reveals that it has indeed been a success and watching its performance over the track that I haven't cleaned in, well, I haven't cleaned, uh, it shows the benefits of a stay alive. So thank you very much for watching. As always, like and subscribe. It means a lot. Uh, in the future, I will be doing a complete overhaul of this modified haul, so keep an eye out for that. Also, I have been practicing on brass coaches, so hopefully the latest instalment of building a Comet kit should be out within the next few months. I say, I would say soon, but I have got really bad at my uh, filming schedule, so it will be out when it's out. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.